be designed was two years. Uh, and it's now 2015, so... I'm making questions to... Yeah, I was, I was wondering, <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. So that was the first question. How long it took? Yeah, how long it took from the design... Uh -huh. uh, Good question, design well done. Okay. ...to the production and commercial... So on the commercial side, I was saying the idea started in 2002, but the, from the design process, I would say 2006 to 2008, was that we did a participatory design process, so, okay. so we had we had the production prototype, and we had the partners, and we were ready to go. And then I think production could be well, we we made them in house with these things. That's how we manufactured them, we make them all ourselves. So I think manufacturing might be a slightly high polluting way of doing it. The uh, scoop two has probably been. Couple, a couple of years uh, still, although uh, you know, again, design back and forth. Uh, we created a whole new type of sensor, built loads of IP around it. It's a whole, it's a, this whole bespoke kind of thing. So it's not just wasn't just re-engineering re that for different materials and manufacturing. We actually recreated, well, not because we created a new type of tactile sensor technology and, and uh, work cool. on Bluetooth and so on. So there's, there's quite a lot gone into it. But cool. probably two years again. So let's open the, the floor to questions, first of all. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you yeah. can. Just to actually introduce yourself, that would probably be a good uh, place to start. Uh, I work for the Shiro Medical as an imaging scientist. Uh, yes, we work in data analysis. I uh, have a load of ideas, but it's a Load of ideas in the IoT space, the maker space? Uh, not the analytics. Uh, in data analytics, yeah. okay, specifically. One, one, one question is sort of, how do people get over this um, question of security? What you, what the idea you have, like how do you, you sort of like IP protection. IP protection. Mm -hmm. You go through it, it first, or you make things first. Uh, that's a really good question because I'd be a bit paranoid. I'd have yeah. the best idea ever <laughs> to put on a crowdfunding <laughs> platform and find that someone replicates the campaign. What's to stop them, right? I, I would, yeah, well, you, you well so, uh, an interesting story too. One, I would say, just get on with it, right? Uh, you do get, and I'm from an academic background in, in academia, very protective of your ideas, very protective. Uh, and that's really, it just, it just hurts you, it slows you down. In our situation with Scoob, what happened in terms of IP protection, go, just go see a lawyer, you know, they'll give you a consultation for an hour for free, you know, and then you'll know where you stand. Um, but with us, the people we were working with, needed the PR from the work that we'd done and announced to us they were going to do an article about it in the Times that was going out the next day. And we were like, but, it's, but if you put it in the public domain, we can then patent that and then build a business around it. So we had to do a patent in, uh, 12, in 12 hours. <laughs> uh, and I had, um, oh my goodness, I didn't uh, know that was possible. Uh, it was, very good guys, uh, a firm at Edinburgh, give you, give you their name. Wow. Uh, and we got it actually, that school one has it, it was granted. Um, so <laughs> there you go. Um, wow. But just don't let, it, don't let it worry you. Go and seek advice. Don't let it kind of shut you down and get it out there. <coughs> when you're in the startup community, the tech startup community, that you know, ideas are dime a dozen. Yeah. And it is so easy to replicate these days. You've got to be super agile. And no matter how much, much you attempt to nail down the IP, someone, if they're determined enough, they will find ways to, to circumvent the protection. So you see it all the time. It's all about implementation, execution. That's the really hard bit, getting into to market, establishing the brand, the brand getting that loyalty behind uh, the, the product, and uh, a little bit less about IP. Uh, I would say that's my my view on the things. Can I just add that you've got to gauge what your product is worth. So something that might be worth 100 grand, and um, you might make 50 grand profit on it, then I wouldn't go that way. If it's something that's going to be worth 10 million, then it's worth it because the file patents are expensive. expensive. Yeah, I've been through the process um, numerous times. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly when you then start entering non-English territories, the translation costs are. Prohibitive, so you've got to be pretty sure that those territories, like Japan, for example, mm. are worth entering, and you have to get all the documentation retranslated. It can be very costly, and then you have to actually pay to enforce it on a yearly basis. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and if you're a small guy, there's no preemption. They're thinking, well, you know, possession is nine tenths or whatever it is. So if we swipe the ideas down to them to sue us, and because we're a multi-billion-dollar company, they're not going to have the capability. You can get IP protection insurance. 
but it's really expensive. And again, the economies don't really work out often for early stage uh, startup companies. Trade, trade secrets, you know, company secrets, yeah. um, patents, everything's out there so people can just read it and they can do some good quotes. Causal ambiguity, sorry, is another one where your competitors can reverse engineer, yeah. but because there are so many almost hidden sources of competitive advantage, it's difficult for your competitors to nail down exactly why you're able to outcompete them. And that's another, you know, that's again, process innovation. I'd say the, the main benefits to us from, from taking, from doing IP stuff, was in, is that in, in securing investment. So investors, investors they like to, they want to make work. And, and, if it, and if it secures you the investment, then it's worth it. Was there any copying your hey? Did anyone copy this? Or? Not yet. Uh, there's been, I mean, there's a couple of d d slightly different kind of versions. No one's, no one's copied yet. Um, I'm hoping someone's going to copy it soon, which may mean we're on to something. Maybe it's just not very good. Imitation is the best platform of flattery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, mixed feelings about that. But uh, hopefully they will at some point. Or not. Right, should we uh, move on to the next question? Me? Yeah, yep. absolutely. And basically, yeah. Um, I, I'm Sorry, what's your name? James. And, and I've done, um, I sort of do art design, so I've done art residencies in Fab Labs. I did one in Montreal and one in Fab Lab London. So I made some stuff there with all the materials. And this is a question that I'm really interested in at the moment, is um, with the maker movement at the moment, it's really you know vibrant and energetic and it's all open and stuff like that. How do you see the future of it going when things like 3D printers and laser cutters go down in price and people can go back into their rooms and just do it themselves? And it, do you see it like the community thing getting lost, the make, learn, and share kind of thing sort of going away as people can afford these machines? Collaboration is essentially what you're talking about. Yeah, we we'll continue to collaborate out of necessity or desire. Yeah. I think there are certain people who will want to get out and meet and there are other people, you know, the lone genius who will just prefer just to hang out in a shed doing their thing. Yeah. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, but I also think that it's not that easy to be creative with these machines. Mm -hmm. um, well, well the, the, the work I showed uh, by Diego mm -hmm. is exactly like this, this um, fight about how you can be innovative with 3D printing because mm -hmm. Uh, of course, you can reproduce a lot of things, and then it's probably cheaper to buy in the, in the corner, in the yeah. corner on the, sh uh, the shop around the corner. Yeah. But uh, to be like truly creative with these machines, it's uh, not that easy. I think it's, it's about sharing resources, isn't it? Because yeah. I, I keep looking for an excuse to buy a 3D printer, but I just don't have any need for one. So yeah. I'd rather interact with some other guys who've got a 3D printer and then share my stuff with them, yeah. and then we get sort of dialogue going, and it's, it's getting those interdisciplinary um, backgrounds together and getting people talking and sharing resources. It's I mean, I think you know, with the different crowdfunding patterns and the maker movement, there is there is a lot more, there is, a, although it's becoming cheaper, you're saying people maybe get wise, I think there's, there's a lot of community. I mean, even just running a campaign, or the campaigns get in touch, and it's, even, it's just social or marketing, or you may find you've got you know, similar uh, manufacturing problems and share stuff. And I think there, there, is, there, is a, uh, there, is a, there is a shift in that. And so much so that already quite big organizations are picking up on that, and they're building these kind of hardware startup incubators, either out in Hong Kong or this. They're all spring up all over the place now, and they're, by taking those real specialism from the manufacturing industry and helping, you know, bridge that gap between the small community in the makers and actually, you know, the ones that can make it into the mainstream. What's the big stuff. one? Is it PCI International something? Are we one? Yeah, yeah originally Brinks, Irish Brinks, one. Brinks and you one. That's that's an Internet Things one. Internet Things. Yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 they're popping up, aren't they? Yeah. And they just handle the entire process. They've already got the supply chain. Or, or bits, or even just bits. They're yeah. they're incredibly um, open. Yeah, I mean they take their pound of flesh obviously in the form of equity in most cases, but in most cases it's actually worth giving that equity to have access to that, uh, you know, manufacturing facilities in China so you don't have to do that. Um, helping with the product design, the marketing, the, the, uh, the, the mentorship and so on. So a lot of the hardware accelerators, <coughs> often sponsored actually by innovation funds, so that, you know, the big guys, yeah. uh, taking some of the retained profits and very sensibly uh, investing in early stage in uh, startups. Any other questions? This uh, question is for Sir Patrick. How many LEDs do you have? Sorry, Gary. <laughs> <That's wrong. laughs> I, I'm actually going to get you to, to, to stand up and talk about it. So it's Gareth from. I'm, I'm Gareth Edwards. I, I work for Zalps. Uh, 
FPJ company is here and then I'm also a director of Edward I thought that it is a local leader space here for a little bit but nothing. Um, oh, so it's the, the actual figure, it's, it, it is in the millions, because if you look at some of the LEDs, <laughs> it's 500 LEDs in them, and I've got maybe a thousand of those, so they're, yeah, but uh, no, I've got probably, in terms of unique displays, probably about 200 different types, some of which I've got one off, some I've got 2,000 off, so it's, yeah, it's trying to find the ones that are useful and keep a stock of those. So they're all useful. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, all. Uh, project, I've got a wee thing. Introduce yourself real quick. Sorry, thank you. I knew it was going to fail, but it was too late or something. Uh, David Hood, uh, I'm a competitiveness specialist. Um, a what, sorry? Competitiveness specialist. Oh, okay. It's, not, it's, oh, a, yeah, yeah. it's a first name for being a marketer, but you don't want to say a marketer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's something you're thinking about down there. I'm a marketer now. I used to be industrial chemist working in electronics. I used to be a medical microbiologist. I want to work with Patrick. Yeah. Um, Paul was wondering what I wanted to do, but I think he just gave me a lead this evening. Um, generally speaking, just quickly on the subject of crowdfunding, being a marketer, it's elegant. Yeah. You know, testing the market, crowdsourcing, you don't crowdfunding, all that kind of stuff. But the crowdfunding platforms are not there for us, they're there for themselves, and they're very, very poor at putting two, the two components together, which is the market and us, the projects. In fact, I asked them that question, what the hell are you doing? And they said, well, um, nothing. Because I said, well, you're not bringing a market to me, what are you going to do? And they said, well, you're supposed to bring the market and the product. And I thought, well, why? And who's this, though? Which can you this name? Cindy Google. And others. And others. It's a shame that I hear too And others. Well, I did ask, I did ask <coughs> him the last time she was in this room, actually. But anyway, sorry, my question, I guess, is is there scope for somebody to crowd, crowdfund, crowd, crowdsource the makers community? So we don't have that problem. So it's, it's at least a bit more evolved. So when you get really the need and you've got supply, and it's just haphazard. Yeah. 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 There's a kind of platform market yeah, space that's very active, challenging, getting yeah. the buy and then supply There's active automators and all sorts of things going on there, algorithms, but yeah. there really isn't some kind of process that matches people together. <coughs> like a Spotify There's a long question, things, sorry. You could, like a Spotify of things you could buy, things you might want. Yeah, kind of like it's that. something that's like, <laughs> well, it's the same, it's the same model, model. So for founders <laughs> and yeah. uh, product uh, makers. A bit more yeah, but I mean, I'm, not, I'm pretty engaged because I blog about this stuff. And um, actually, what I would like to have is a control panel which um, gives me all the, the crowdfunding projects that I'm specifically interested in. I'm not really interested in someone who wants to crowdfund an opera, for example. It's got to be connected technology. And I want that fee to come from Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and lots of the more niche obscure ones as well. We can really get the gold dust, but they don't bubble up because they don't get the visibility. I don't hear about them, I don't vlog about them. So I think you're right that there's still a great opportunity there to, to put the two together. Uh, like a platform. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we've got IBM Watson personality insights, which uh, can take a Twitter feed from somebody you might want to participate with, analyze our profile and see if they're the right fit for who you want to actually go for. So you know you can build that for yourself. Watson is I mean who who knows what Watson is, raise your hand. I've been Watson and the, the the power of having access to a mega super duper computer and having via uh, you know API the ability to plug that into to your own company, leverage that. And there are some really exciting startups who, who have access to it that are doing some interesting things in healthcare, uh, healthcare mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I'm sure we'll see more success stories come out of it. So, uh, any more questions? Can, can we make a comment on that? Of course um, you can. Uh, I think one of the problems is also the time scale. And, 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 you know, one of the problems of this crowds, crowdfunding platform is that people who contribute expect like an immediate product. And the time scale to produce these things, at least from a design perspective, is huge, it's like years, right? Um, so, I don't know if it, there is a way to match these expectations of contributing and getting something back and waiting, uh, being able to wait years to see this out yeah, there. The platforms are so far behind the rest of us, yeah. which is understandable because they're just new. It could be a niche. Okay. Absolutely. So I think we've got a couple uh, of announcements. Do I have a really quick yeah, question? Are you sure? Okay. So we've got a couple of announcements. This is like a quick open forum. Usually what I do right at the beginning of the evening, but because we've, we've got such a packed schedule, we'll do it now quickly. Um, so Gareth, you've got uh, an announcement, I think. Anyone else? Should, 
Jeff, uh, do you want to go first? Okay. Yeah.